One of the last things that my parents said to me as they were all emotional, dropping me off of college, mom's trying not to cry, one of the last things they said was, go to mass, go to church. And for me, being Catholic, that was all being Catholic meant, was go to church. Um, I didn't have any faith life. I didn't pray ever. I didn't know how to pray, <laughs> really. Um, the words personal relationship with God, I don't think I ever even heard those strung together before I got to college. Um, I didn't know how to listen for the voice of the Lord. I didn't know how to discern what he wanted. I knew nothing. My relationship with him was totally non-existent. So I went to church because being Catholic, that was what you did. And that was it. Nothing else. Freshman year, I, um, they say that college is supposed to be the time of your life. I was, I was not having the time of my life. I was lonely. I was stuck in my dorm. I felt like I didn't have any friends. Like I didn't even know how to make them. I was really, just really, really deeply unhappy. I wasn't enjoying myself at all. Uh, I didn't know anyone. And if you had asked me at that time if I believed in God, I would have said yes. I had some concept of a God. I thought he was this distant dude who made everything and just let it be. Like, didn't care about me, didn't look out for me, wasn't invested in my life at all, wasn't visible in any way. Um, so yeah, freshman year was rough. I had no faith, I had no friends. I had nothing to keep me company but my loneliness and unhappiness and unsatisfaction. And that began to change freshman year when I met a student, his name was Adam, he was a senior. Um, he lived in the men's house. I didn't know that at the time that I met him. He was just like this regular cool dude. And we met, we sort of met twice. Uh, the first time I met him was at a dinner um, and I don't think we even spoke at that dinner. I have no memory of interacting with him when I think back on that. Nothing. A few weeks later, we're walking across the green and he spots me and stops me and he's like, hey, are you coming to dinner? And I'm like, Sh yeah, sure, Why? What? what's dinner? And so we're walking and we go to the men's house and I just remember being so struck by the fact that he remembered who I was. We had hardly, we didn't interact. I don't think we spoke and he still knew who I was. And maybe it's because I was so lonely and so unhappy, but that really, really stood out to me. I was like, wow, we hardly interacted and he still knows who I am. I was totally blown away by that. And that was, I think, my first clue that there's something different going on with the guys in campus ministry. So I ended up in his small group and he was the MC for Fan of the Flame that year. Um, I did not want to go. He was like, you have to go. You need to go. I want you to go. This will be good for you. I'm like, I've been on retreats before. They kind of didn't go great. I was like, I, I really don't want to go. I don't want to do this. And he was like, no, you need to go. I'm like, I don't have any money. He's like, I'll pay for you. And I'm like, it's my birthday that weekend. He's like, it's mine too. Go anyway. So I finally had run out of excuses, so I went on Phantom of the Flame. And they're giving us these talks about a God who loves you, and a God who cares about you, and I am just not buying it. I'm like, I don't like this, I don't want to be here. Take me back to campus, get me out of here. But I remember thinking to myself at one point during the retreat <clears throat> that out of, um, regarding my friendship with Adam, out of all the thousands of people at Seton Hall, I had somehow managed to cross paths with him. And that if there was a guy on campus down here who I had just met by chance, or what felt like chance at the time, that cared about me and loved me and looked out for me and invested in me, then was it so crazy that there was a God who did the same thing? I remember having that thought on Phantom of Flame. And so they, um, they started praying over me for the prayer meeting. We were praying together. And I remember feeling the love of God for the first time and just experiencing this feeling of just joy that I, I can't even really begin to describe because it's unlike anything I've, I had ever experienced to that point. And even now, four years later, I still have trouble describing it because it was so unlike anything ever before. 
Um, and that was just the start of the journey. So my sophomore year, I moved into the men's house. This is my third year here, which is crazy. Um, and yeah, my faith has grown tremendously since I've been here. Um, I have a prayer life, a pretty good one, I would say. Um, I know how to listen for the voice of the Lord. I know how to discern what he wants. I know how to pray. Um, I didn't know how to pray before. I, I, I can't even begin to imagine where I would have ended up if I hadn't met him and then through him met the Lord and these men that I live with now. Um, it's been incredible to have lived here and to have walked in this way of life for three years to, to be with these brothers and to lean on them and to have them lean on me and to push each other and growing in your faith and to be pushed by them. And it's, it's been an incredible experience, one that I am unbelievably grateful for. So now that I've, I've met these men and I've met the Lord through these men and the efforts that they've put into me, I have built a foundation that will carry me for the rest of my life uh, into a career, into whatever is beyond that. Um, so it's all because of SPO and the community that this all happened and I am incredibly grateful for them and for what it has given me.